Ladies and gentlemen, Ryder College is proud to present electro recording artist Harry Chapin. First time in my life I had to carry my own guitar on stage. Our road crew's taking a vacation. It serves me right, no? I came into town with a knapsack on my shoulder and a pocket full of stories that I just had to tell. You know, I've knocked around a bit and I've had my share of small town glories. I've hit the city and that crazy carousel. You know, I've been feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, you know, I was only lonely like everybody else. And Bill, you brought your Sunday morning sunshine. It holds the one you care for It becomes a different place And I never felt so far from along Oh baby, you brought me halfway home Oh baby, you brought me halfway home Your Sunday morning sunshine Gear it to my Monday morning rain And it was raining, and it was raining You taught me happiness just one time It keeps on coming back again taught me happiness just one time it keeps on coming back again yeah Uh, we're going to uh, do some story songs tonight, which may or may not confuse you. Uh, uh, doing story songs has weird problems for me because, first of all, it, it usually takes a little bit of time, which means I don't get them on the radio very much. But uh, every once in a while, one does make it on the AM radio. Uh, uh, it always confuses me, however, because the average single is bought by a pre- or post-pubescent American female between 10 and 15. And uh, I don't usually write to that, write up to that particular audience. And uh, uh, so anyway, I was surprised when this song uh, did well, but uh, maybe it's because it's about a guy who's 45 going on 15. <laughs> Hello, honey, it's me. What did you think when you heard me back on the radio? What did the kids say when they knew it was their long-lost daddy? Oh, remember? 
remember how we listened to the radio And I said, that's the place to be How I got the job as an FM jock The day you married me It was two kids and I was in the AM rock But I just had to run around It's been eight years since I left you, babe Let me tell you about what's gone down dream that I just take off in my car but you can travel on 10,000 miles and still stay where you are I've been thinking that I should stop this shocking and stop that record store maybe I could settle down if you take me back once more Okay, honey, I see I guess he's better than me Sure, old girl, I understand You don't have to worry I'm such a happy man W-O-L-D 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 The gentleman behind me is in, in charge of vocal pyrotechnics in this group, uh, Mr. John Wallace.
He used to he used to be the boys soprano soloist at the Grace Church Episcopal Choir for boys and men. And uh, about three or four weeks ago, a major event happened in his life. Puberty hit, and uh, it's made a radical difference in his life. Uh, uh, all kinds of new horizons have opened themselves, but uh, it's also helped the group in certain ways because we can do some things with him singing low parts, as you'll hear in a second. But uh, it's caused problems with taxi. You see, he used to sing the high part with no problem. Now we have to have a fifth member in this group who stands behind his bass amp. It's a little midget that walks out when the part in taxi comes and stands directly behind John, reaches up, grabs firmly, and goes, <clears throat> and he gets up to the high part. So it works out. Okay. Anyway, this is a song about a singer named Mr. Tanner. <laughs> Mr. Tanner was a cleaner from a town in the Midwest. And of all the cleaning shops around, he'd made his the best. But he also was a baritone who sang while hanging clothes. He'd practice scales while pressing tails and sang at local shows. His friends and neighbors praised the voice that poured out from his throat. They said that he should use his gift instead of cleaning coats. But music was his life. It was not his livelihood, and it made him feel so happy, and it made him feel so good, and he sang from his heart, and he sang from his soul. He did not know how when he sang, it just made him whole. His friends kept working on him to draft music out full time. A big debut and rave reviews, a great career to climb. Finally, they got to him. He would take the flame. A concert agent in New York agreed to have him the same. And there were plane tickets, phone calls, money spent to rent the hall. It took most of his savings, but he gladly used them all. It was his life, it was not his livelihood, and it made him feel so happy, and it made him feel so good, and he sang from his heart, and he sang from his soul, he did not know how it is. It was a blur to him, spatters of applause. He did not know how well he sang, he only heard the applause. But the critics were concise, it only took four lines, and no one could accuse them of being overkind. Mr. Martin Tanner, baritone of Dayton, Ohio, made his town hall debut last night. He came well prepared, but unfortunately, his presentation was not up to contemporary professional standards. His voice lacks the range of tonal color necessary to make it consistently interesting. Full-time consideration of another endeavor might be in order. and was questioned by his friends but he smiled and just said nothing and it never sang again excepting very late at night when the shop was dark and closed he sang softly to himself as he sorted through the clothes
was his life. It was not his livelihood, and it made him feel so happy, and it made him feel so good, and it sang from his heart. Thank you. I got a song now that's uh, dedicated to all the bad guitar players in America. It sounds like we got a convention in town here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. I'm glad. I christened my guitar as my monophonic symphony, 12 string, 6 string orchestra. In my room, I'd practice late and they'd leave me alone. My mother said, You're nothing yet to make the folks ride home. So I played all the talent nights, I'd finish, they'd applaud. Some call it muffled laughter. I just figured they were odd. So I went up for an encore, but they screamed they'd had enough. Maybe I just need a group to help me do my stuff, and I need you tonight, guys. Oh, I dream the bass will join me and fill the bottom in. And maybe now some lead guitar so it would not sound so thin. I need some drums to set the beat and help me keep in time. And way back in the distance, some strings would sound so fine. We'd all play together like fine musicians should. And it would sound like music, and the music would sound good. But in real life, I'm stuck with that same old formula. Me and my mom. Six string, my solo. Thank you. Orchestra. Do it, fingers. Eat your goddamn heart out, John McLaughlin. I write love songs for my favorite girl and sing them soft and slow. But before I get to finish, she says she has to go. She's nice and says, excuse me, I've got to find a bar. I think I need refreshment for I hear you play guitar. Oh, I sent a demo tape I made to the record companies. Two came back, address unknown, one came back, C-O-D. Of course, I get form letters, all saying pleasant things, like suggesting I should find a trade where I would not have to sing. And so I dream my face will join me and fill the bottom in. Maybe now some lead guitar would not sound up. Time. And way back in the distance, some strings would sound so fine. We'd all play together like fine musicians, yeah. And it would sound like music, and our music would sound good. But in real life, I'm stuck with that same old formula, the in my monophonic symphony, six, six strings. 
my solo. I'm gonna get that mother right. Wait a second. on my left is the man that's responsible for this group sounding a little bit different. Uh, when I first met Michael, he told me he'd gone to Juilliard for seven years, which really impressed me because I thought it was a four-year school. Uh, but, it, but it seems like all the great string players at one time or another had gone to that particular music school, and Michael's no exception. One of the finest young cellists in America, Mr. Michael Masters. Hey. This is a song that I think can demonstrate what he does to help me with some of these long story songs. This one's about a rather odd triangle of people, and as the gentleman over there called out, it's called A Better Place to Be. God, I wish these lights were out. It was an early morning bar room And the place just opened up And the little man come in so fast And it started at his cups And the brothers served the whiskey She was a big old friendly girl Who tried to fight her empty nights By smiling at the world And she said, hey bub, it's been a while since you've been around Where the hell you've been hiding And why you look so down But the little man just sat there Like he never heard a sound The waitress she gave out with a cough And acting not the least Put off she spoke Once again she said I don't want to bother you, consider it understood. I know I'm not no beauty queen, but I sure can listen good. And the little man took his drink in his hand, then he raised it to his lips. He took a couple of sips, and he told the waitress his story. If you 
want me to come with you then that's all right with me cause I know I'm going nowhere and anywhere's a better place to be boarding house and I took her up to my room and I went to turn on the only light to brighten up the glow but she said please leave the light off oh I don't mind the dark and as the clothes all tumbled round her I could hear my heart She lay back in my bed It was the kind of scene I only had imagined in my head I just could not believe it To think that she was real And as I tried to tell her She said, shh I know just how you feel if you want to come here with me Then that's all right with me Cause I've been oh so lonely Loving someone is a better way to be She took her bar rag and she wiped it across her eyes. And as she spoke, her voice came out with something like a sigh. She said, I wish that I was beautiful or that you were halfway blind. And I wish I weren't so goddamn fat. I wish that you were mine. And I wish that you'd come with me when I leave for home for we both know all about emptiness and living all alone and the little man looked at the empty glass in his hand and he smiled a crooked grin said I Yes, I'm out of tin, and I know we both have been so long. 
Thank you. You guys are outrageous. Thank you. The last, but by no means least, member of this group is our lead guitarist and sex symbol, Mr. Ronald Palmer. Now, Ron functions in many ways in this group. He's the old sage. Uh, when I say sex symbol, it's sort of, he has, well, well, you see, he's the only sex symbol in America that doesn't have a butt. His shoulders go straight down to his ankles. There's nothing back there, folks. But, uh, All right, so what's up front that counts? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but as we've explained earlier, that I have a congenital inability to write a song and a story under five minutes. Well, Ron over here is the master of the 30-second epic. And uh, if you're in the mood, would you like to hear one or two? <laughs> He's got some songs that made him famous, plus some new ones he's been working on since we saw you last. Uh, why don't you start out with one of the old cookers and then uh, maybe work into a new thing? Okay. What do you got in mind? I guess I could do uh, lesson number 18. Now, are you going to explain how you got the title or how you got the song? I guess song? I'll just jump right into it. <laughs> Mr. P, did you hear that public outpouring of ecstasy? Doesn't that warm the cockles of your heart? What? There was an old folk song about a lady who used to sell cockles and mussels. Don't you remember that? Yeah, but I'd rather forget. Okay. What do you got for us now? You got a new one or you got a, uh, another uh, old one? Oh, I... Oh, yeah, I wrote a new one. Uh, I wanted to do tonight. It's about, uh... It's about smoking marijuana. But I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> Are you high on life again, Palmer? <laughs> well, anyway, I'll do uh, experience number nine. Now, what's this one about? This is a bicycle and song. <laughs> so. Riding on my bicycle, feeling free and loose. I hit a parked car <laughs> Fell on the crossbar <laughs> And I'll never Reproduce <laughs> Ron, a standing ovation. He's heard what I can do with six strings. Here's five.
Well, all right. Now, I can say frankly that I didn't play that just to scare Earl Scruggs. Uh, well, anyway, it's 1830, young man our age is standing at a railroad depot, which is nothing more than a watering hole beside a single track across the prairie. And uh, he's looking at, towards the horizon where there's a column of smoke ra rising straight up in the motionless air. And ever so slowly, a train is growing larger. And on that train is only one single passenger, mail order any, come to find her husband. First I did not think it could be you You're the only one that got off the train So you must be my wife, Miss Annie Halsey Yes, yes, I guess I am your husband Hello, I'm Harry Craig I'm glad you're here You who are the woman Who's come to be my wife You know you're not as pretty As I dreamed you'd be But then I'm not no handsome fancy Dan And out here looks so really Not important no, no, it's what's inside a woman when she's up against the land. May Lord or any, never mind you crying. Your tears are sweet rain in my empty life. May Lord or any, can't you see I'm trying? Tell you that I'm glad you're here You are the woman who's come to be my wife You know it's not no easy life you're entering Winter wind comes whistling through the cracks there in the sun. You know, you'll never have too many neighbors. There's you, girl, and there's me, and there's God. You know, I'm just a dirt man. From the North Dakota Plains You're one girl from the city Who's been thrown out on her own And I'm standing here Not sure of what to say to you Except in mail order and Let you and me go
It was raining hard in Frisco. I needed one more fare to make my night. A lady up ahead waved the flag me down. She got in at the light. Oh, where are you going to, my lady blue? It's a shame you ruined your gown in the rain. She just looked out the window. She said, 16 Park Sad Lane. Something about her was familiar. I could swear I've seen her face before But she said, I'm sure you're mistaken And she didn't say anything more It took a while, but she looked in the mirror Then she glanced at the license for my name A smile seemed to come to her slowly It was a sad smile, just the same and she said, how are you, Harry? I said, how are you, Sue? Through the too many miles and the two little smiles, I still remember you. It was somewhere in a fairy tale. We learned about love in the back of a dodge. The lesson hadn't gone too far. You see, she was gonna be an actress, and I was gonna learn to fly. She took off to find the footlights. I took off to find the scan. I've got something inside me to drive a princess blind. There's a wild night wizard he's hiding in me, illuminated my mind. Till my time runs There was not much more for us to talk about Whatever we had once was gone So I turned my cab into the driveway Past the gate and the fine trim lawns And she said, we must get together But I knew it'd never be arranged Then she had me twenty dollars for a 250 fare She said, Harry Keep the change. Well, another man might have been angry, and another man might have been hurt, but another man never would have let her go. I stashed the bill in my shirt, and she walked away in silence. It's strange how you never know. 
We'd both got what we'd asked for Such a long, long time ago You see, she was gonna be an actress And I was gonna learn to fly She took off to find the footlights I took off for the sky And here she's acting happy Inside her handsome home And me, I'm flying in my taxi Take your tits, get the storm I go flying, everybody so high When I'm stoned Ron Palmer, John Wallace, Michael Masters. Thank you. I've got a song that uh, could be about Trenton that I've been uh, working on for the last month or two. I'd like to do it. It's a brand new song. It'll be out in about two weeks. As our, we're working on the fourth album right now. proud of this song, I'm not sure yet. It was the town that made America famous. The church is full and the kids all gone to hell. Six traffic lights and seven cops And all the streets kept clean The supermarket and the drugstore And the bars all doing well And they were the folks that made America famous The local fire department stocked with short-haired volunteers and that Saturday night, while America boozes, the fire department showed dirty movies. The lawyer and the grocer seeing their dreams come to life on the movie screens. While the plumber hopes that it won't be seen as he tries to hide his fears and he wipes away his tears. But something's burning somewhere. Does anybody care? We were the kids that made America famous The kind of kids that long since drove our parents to despair We were lazy long hairs dropping out Lost, confused and coming out Convinced our futures were in down And trying not to care And we lived in the house That made America famous Run down slum the shame Of all the decent folks in town Yes, we hippies and some welfare cases Crowded families of coal black faces Cramped inside some cracked old boards The best that we all could afford But still too fine for the rich landlord To tear it down And 
we could hear the sound of something burning somewhere. Is anybody there? We all live the life that made America famous. Our cops would make a point to shadow us around our town. And we loved children, put a swastika on the bright red firehouse door. America, the beautiful, it makes a body proud. Then came the night that made America famous. Was it carelessness or someone's sick idea of a joke? In the tinderbox trap that we hippies lived in, someone struck a spark. First I thought that I was dreaming, then I saw the first flames gleaming and heard the sound. Of children screaming, coming through the smoke, and something's burning somewhere. Does anybody care? It was the fire that made America famous. The sirens wail and the firemen stumble, sleepy. From their homes, and when the plumber yelled, "Come on, let's go!" They saw what was burning and said, "Take it slow, let 'em sweat a little. They'll never know." And besides, we just cleaned the chrome. Said the plumber, "Then I'm going along." Well, he rolled on up in his fire truck. Raise the ladder to the ledge. When me and my girl and a couple of kids were clinging like bats to the edge, we staggered to salvation. Collapsed on the street, and I never thought that a fat man's face would ever look so sweet. It was the scene that made America famous. Not the law that made America great. You see, I spent that night in the home of a man I'd never known before. It's funny when you get that close; it's kind of hard to hate. I went to sleep with the hope that made America famous. Had the kind of a dream that maybe they're still trying to teach in school. Of the America that made America famous, and of the people who just might understand that how together, yes, we can create. A country better than the one we have made of this land. We have the choice to make each man who dares to dream and reach out his hand a prophet or just a crazy goddamn dreamer of a fool. Yes, a crazy fool. And something's burning somewhere. Does anybody care?